Have you ever seen or heard of an armored Toyota Sequoia? I'm talking about 360 degrees of ballistic protection. Armored Sequoias serve as VIP limousines for banks, law enforcement, and corporate executives. So how protected is the armored Sequoia? To name a few, it can withstand a 7.62 millimeter bullet, 308 Winchester full metal jacket ammunition, and the explosion of two DM-51 hand grenades. The SUV's entire perimeter is armored. I'm talking floor to ceiling. There's even a system in the door seams that protect passengers from bullets that can come through the door seals. It's no surprise that it it's high quality ballistic glass, reinforced suspension, protection for battery and electronic control modules, and of course, heavy duty run flat tires. And if you're a super VIP, you can even upgrade the car with premium security features like smoke screen and filtration systems. But mind you, this is no factory upgrade. You'll have to get this through a custom third party outfitter. But most of us may never ride in such an armored Sequoia. Nevertheless, full-size SUVs in general are considered high-end vehicles. Did you know that today millennials account for the fastest growing demographics in the full-size SUV market? Today, we're looking at two very popular full-size SUVs, the Toyota Sequoia versus the Ford Expedition. So hop in and let's get going. If you had the ability to buy a full-size SUV, would you? Based on market trend and stats, my guess is yes. They say almost everyone wants an SUV, even though in practicality, far less actually need one for its full capabilities. Did you know that Americans buy far more trucks and SUVs than any other country in the world? The fact is, most Americans who buy an SUV do so because they can. Americans love cars, and oftentimes, for SUV fans, it's more about desire and style rather than off-roading needs. It's so popular and the demand is so strong that it's hard to convince consumers about the downsides of the SUV. Namely, that it's generally more expensive, offers poor fuel economy, can sometimes be hard to enter and exit, and also very hard hard to park in a tight garage or carded parking lot because of its size. The truth is, many people buy them because they like the large interior space, comfort, flexibility, all-weather performance, and style that SUVs generally offer. Since 2014, the trucks and SUV market has been growing steadily. This is why sedan sales have been decreasing. Today, trucks and SUVs together account for 70% of the car market. That's how big it is. Three years ago, it hit a record high of almost 30 million worldwide. Of course, numbers like this have the power to impact price. That's why the price of many SUVs have become similar to the prices of competing sedans. Taken all together, SUVs offer competitive price, off-road capabilities, higher levels of comfort, larger trunks, and greater safety. Selling SUVs is much more profitable than selling mid-sized sedans or electric vehicles. This is why the big car companies like GM, Ford, Fiat Chrysler, even some in the premium segment like Maserati, BMW, and Porsche have also entered the SUV market. Ford, for example, is projecting that by the end of the decade, 90% of vehicles produced in North America will be SUVs and pickups. Many consumers who consider buying an SUV will call out its power, large size, and greater safety. Imagine a collision between an SUV and a small hatchback. The SUV is more likely to suffer less damage to itself than the driver. On top of that, the SUV rides high with ground clearance that gives the driver a good view of the road ahead while enabling the car for easy off-road travel. And the large volume of cargo space makes it practical and comfortable for everyone and everything inside. These features help SUVs to be an ideal vehicle for commuters who value comfort and style, outdoor activities, and adventures. And it's not just about cars. As everyone knows, Americans love big cars, even if it's not always used as intended. You feel invincible to ride a beast so high. And this is perfectly acceptable in the U.S. because unlike Europe, we have a lot of roads. The truth is, unless you live in in a large city like New York or LA, the average America in suburbia doesn't worry whether he's able to find a parking space to fit on narrow streets. These questions don't even come to mind. Another purchase driver for the SUV can be the Eagle Booster. If you can afford to get whatever you want, not just what you need, why not? Sometimes it can make you feel good to own something so stately. In this way, you can say an SUV isn't just a vehicle, but it's a status symbol. If you don't believe me, just look at a phone. Most of us likely don't have a flip phone anymore, but a smartphone. How new or outdated? is your phone. And how do you feel when you see your friend's latest and greatest newly released smartphone? You're probably thinking this happens mostly with teenagers who love new devices. And there's some truth to that. But it happens to adults too, especially if you're in the workforce or social setting. Sometimes we can measure ourselves or others by what generation smartphone we have. Even if your smartphone worked perfectly fine, it's year old and a newer model has been released. Somehow you must have it. It's a similar thing with cars. The only difference is that with cars, 
most people tend to keep our cars for years instead of switching it out every single year. How many SUV owners do you know who are serious off-roaders? On the contrary, probably the normal drivers who usually drive their SUVs on regular roads for just regular purposes. By the way, not all SUVs that advertise off-roading characteristics behave off-road in the absolute truest sense of the word. Some of them, if they were ever to see dirt, would immediately sink and get stuck as soon as their wheels touch soft soil or deep mud. By the way, if you haven't seen my video on the best off-roaders, check it out. One last point. It's about maybe versus reality. We all have this tendency to assume we ever want to maybe do a camping trip on a mountain or all sheets of drywall or maybe transport a lot of friends on a road trip. Well, we have a large SUV and it's always ready to go. And it's true. It's great for outdoors and epic adventures. But the reality is that most people use their SUV for daily commuting and daily general driving. So just stop and think about this. What's wrong with renting a $25 U-Haul truck but one time you might move stuff? Or renting an SUV or minivan for a short trip? That can save you a lot more money in the long run if you think about it. But the thing is, most people don't think that way. Instead, they think about the maybes and then opt for the large SUV. And car marketers know that. It's their job and passion to observe consumer behavior and present those maybes in their ads to feed you the dream. Again, these outdoor day trips and road trips are good. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy them too. But just remember, they are more occasional occurrences rather than daily events for most people. But don't just take my perspective on things. When you're deciding on your next family car, the SUV does offer many unique advantages, namely power and performance, large comfortable interior space, and the ability to sit high for better visibility. So let's compare the two popular full-size SUVs, the Toyota Sequoia versus the Ford Expedition. Let's start with the Toyota Sequoia. Did you know that the Sequoia was originally going to be named the Highlander? But as we can see today, that name is used for Toyota's crossover. The Sequoia is a full-size SUV based on the Toyota Tundra pickup. Toyota introduced more than 20 years ago, back in the year 2000, and it was assembled at the Toyota manufacturing plant in Princeton, Indiana. This is Toyota's first full-size SUV in North America. It's also the largest Toyota SUV to date, bigger than the Land Cruiser and the Highlander. It's surprisingly maneuverable, easy to park despite its large size, can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 7.4 seconds. The seats are large and comfortable, and wind noise is almost inaudible, but I do have to say you can sense this model has been around. The current generation debuted in 2008, so you can see why several people have commented that it feels outdated and you should wait for the 2023 Toyota Sequoia redesign. For example, the 2022 model, while new, still has the same drivetrain we've seen for years. Toyota only offers a Sequoia with a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V8 engine, which has made it to a six-speed automatic transmission. It's this outdated drivetrain that makes the Sequoia one of the thirstiest cars in Toyota's lineup. We're talking an EPA combined rating of 15 miles a gallon and a two-wheel drive. The four-wheel drive is rated at 14 miles a gallon. The outdated drivetrain also limits Sequoia's towing capacity to 75. 400 pounds. To put that into perspective, Ford Expedition could tow up to 9,300 pounds. Generally, a Sequoia lasts 200,000 miles. A Sequoia is a Toyota. So in general, this means reliability, good suspension for off-roading and towing. That said, due to its outdated drivetrain, towing on this SUV is limited to 7,400 pounds, which is less than the Ford Expedition, which can handle up to 9,300 pounds. But now, let's look at the Ford Expedition. This is a three-row SUV, and Ford introduced it in 1997 as its successor to the Ford Bronco. The Expedition was Ford's first full-size four-door SUV. Like the Toyota Sequoia, the Ford Expedition is known as one of the most durable vehicles on the road, and it remains one of the best-selling large SUVs. SUVs in the United States, and it's easy to see why. It's appealing, it offers impressive cargo and cabin space, and has great towing capability. So how does the Expedition compare with Sequoia? The Expedition is powered by a 3.5 liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6 mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission that pair with rear or all-wheel drive. The standard can output 380 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So horsepower is at par, but you get more torque with the Expedition. The Limited is boosted to 400 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque. If you get the Timberline or limited with the Stealth Performance Package, that's an extra boost up to 440 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. Its drivetrain is what makes the car strong and powerful. As I mentioned before, we're talking a towing capability of 9,300 pounds, so we're talking more muscle. So our fuel economy is concerned, the Expedition is a tad leg up. EPA rates the rear wheel drive at 17 miles per gallon and 23 miles per gallon for city and highway, where all wheel drive drops it to 22 on the highway. As far as the interior is concerned, first of all, you can't help but notice the 12 inch touchscreen, which is significantly larger than what you see in the Sequoia. The Expedition accommodates up to eight passengers, as does the Sequoia. That being said, the Expedition is room and more comfortable due to the 44 inch, 42 inch, and 36 inches of leg room in the first, second, and third rows. 
that's not all. Just look at the cargo space. The expedition offers about two more cubic feet of space. All in all, it seems fairly obvious to me who's the winner in my book between these two SUVs. But now you tell me, have you ever seen or been in an armored Toyota Sequoia? Which do you prefer, the Ford Expedition or the Toyota Sequoia, and why? If you've driven either, please share your experience and opinion by commenting below. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe for more car comparisons and car content. Thanks for your support.